Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna walk through some problems on Stratascratch, which is a great platform for data science interview questions and practicing Python pandas more generally. So I've left a link in the description to get to this site. Uh, and on it, you have all sorts of data science type questions uh, from all sorts of companies. So uh, Airbnb, Amazon, Apple, uh, all sorts of, of different companies with varying difficulty levels. Today, we'll specifically be doing two Facebook data science interview questions with an easy difficulty. So we'll stop, start with this top search results question. I've put a link for the specific problem in the description. So in this problem, you are given a table that contains search results. If the position column represents the position of the search results, write a query to calculate the percentage of search results that were in the top three position. Okay, that seems straightforward enough. Okay, so for some context of this problem, imagine we're on Google and we uh, search up something like Tesla, Elon Musk. Well, the first three search results would be whatever comes up at the top of this list. So one, two, three. So we're really trying to filter some data to figure out what was in the top three positions uh, of that search result. And so in this case, in Facebook data. Uh, and so what are we working with? What data? Well, in Stratascratch, you can run this panel over here by typing Alt Enter. And I believe that to do this, you'll have to actually create an account. So you can kind of just take a second to do that. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and once you create an account, then you can run your code and, and kind of see what is popping up. And so what's gonna pop up is either going to be the last line of code. So in this case, I didn't print the head of the data frame. So the code is already loaded into this data frame and that's how they usually start out. But I didn't actually have to print this data frame. It will uh, print out the last line, but I also could do something like if I just wrote print five, we see we just got the output five down here. So that is what is going on uh, in this console. So now what are we trying to do? Well, let's look at our data again. All right, so we have four columns here, query, result ID, position, and notes. And our goal is to figure out the percentage of search results that were in the top three position. So what that means is that for all the rows in this data frame, we are trying to find what percentage of those rows have a position of three or less. So how would you go about doing that? And I think the way that you might get the most out of this video is feel free to pause and try this problem out on your own. And then when you wanna see how I would approach the solution, feel free to resume the video. Okay, so if I was solving this and knowing that we need to calculate a percentage that's kind of making me think that we need to do two separate things. We first need to figure out how many rows were in the top three position, and we also need to know how many rows there were in total. So let's start by trying to figure out the rows that were in the top three position. Okay, so to do that, we can take our data frame, which is Facebook search results, and if we wanted to just get the position column, we would do something like this. And this works really well when we combine it with a filter. So I can do Facebook search results, and then I can take the query that just grabs the position, and I can specify I want it to be less than or equal to three. So this is gonna give me all of the rows with a position less than or equal to three. And we see that in the, the, the results that were returned, uh, it's all one, two, and three. So that looks good there. And so with this, what we next wanna do is just figure out how many total rows match this uh, condition. So if I said something like, how many or Python pandas count number of rows? So I just wanna find the number of rows. We see we have a Stack Overflow post. Um, I'm trying to get the number of rows from a data frame and pandas. Um, for a data frame DF, one can use any of the following. 
So the number of rows, we can use length of the index, the shape, zero, or the count. Uh, it looks like shape and index have the lowest um, runtime. So we'll go with one of those. Uh, I think given the difference in these runtimes, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use shape in this case. So I'll, I'll call this top three. So top three equals that. And so if we wanted to get the number of rows that are in the top three, I'm gonna call this top three count. And that's gonna just be the top three data frame dot shape zero. And let's print top three count. We see we got 10. And then the final thing to do is to figure out what is the total number of rows. Well, total rows is just gonna be equal to the full Facebook search results that we had to begin with. And we can do the same thing. We do shape zero, because we want just the total number of rows there. We get 24. So the final thing we need to do is get a percentage. Well, if we do a division here, top three count divided by um, total rows, uh, we get a fraction. So the fraction is 0.41, six repeating. But if we wanna turn that into a percentage, we can do times 100. And I think we can go ahead and check our solution. Look at that, your solution is correct. Congratulations, your solution has now been logged in the solution from users tab. Um, so that's cool. That was a good little problem. And one thing that's really nice about this platform is that you can see all of the solutions from users um, by going in here. So, you know, like this someone did it pretty much the same as us here. Uh, you know, this person used the count. They did it all in just one line, it looks like. That's cool. And this is super helpful because I've learned a lot of neat tricks with pandas by just looking through user submissions. So this is a good way to kind of like see how others approach it as well. All right, let's do another Facebook question. So I'm gonna go back to questions. I already have a filter in place, I believe. We just did top search results. So I'm gonna do this next one, popularity of hack. Again, this is available. I have a link in the description to this question. Uh, let's see what it's uh, about. So Facebook has developed a new programming language called Hack. To measure the popularity of Hack, they ran a survey with their employees. The survey included data on previous programming familiarity, as well as the number of years of experience, age, gender, and most importantly, satisfaction with Hack. Due to an error, lo location data was not collected, but your su supervisor demands a report showing the average popularity of Hack by office location. Luckily, the user IDs of employees completing the surveys were stored. Based on the information, find the average popularity of hack per office location. Output the location along with the average popularity. Okay, so we have two data frames in this case. We have Facebook employees and Facebook hack survey. Um, well, and, and now we need to do a, we need to output the average popularity based on the location. So let's see what we have in the Facebook employees data frame. We see we have a user ID, I believe, their location, and then some other data about that user. And what do we have in the other data frame? So that was the, I guess, Facebook hack survey. I'll do the head of that to see the first five rows. Okay, so this gives us employee ID, age, gender, and popularity. Cool. So what do we have to do here? We need to connect from that first data frame, the location, to the second data frame, we need the popularity. And so what do they share that is the same? I'm gonna show the, uh, look at these columns, and then I'll show the other data frame one more time we have these columns. So kind of how do, can we connect these two data frames to get the output that we're looking for? That's really the, 
the goal of this question. Then we have to perform some additional computation on that. Feel free to pause the video, try this one on your own, and then resume the video when you want to see how I would solve it. Okay, so to solve this, what we need to do is take this ID we have here and connect it with the employee ID we have here. So in pandas, this is called a join. So to figure out how I might semantically put this to join these two data frames, I would just say join in pandas Python to Google, pandas data frame join. Let's see if we can get an example. We have one data frame here. We have another data frame here. And we can do df.join. We use the other data frame's name. And then we specify the left suffix. So that's going to be what column we want from this one with the right suffix, which is which column we want from other. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to just copy this line and adapt it to what we need. So in this case, our first data frame would be, uh, let's say, and one thing I can do too to make this easier to see in one line, so I can expand that, Facebook employees dot join of Facebook hack survey. So if I print out the Facebook employees one again, I'm gonna just comment this out and comment this out. Oh, and I'm going to just display that instead of print, just so it prints out nicely. Uh, we have the ID here, and we want to connect that to the employee ID. So in this query, we would want to do ID of Facebook employees with employee ID, ID of the uh, Facebook hack survey. Run that. And we see now, if we go down here, we see, and this would be easier if I open it in a separate tab, we see that we get all of these columns now as part of the same uh, data frame. So that's really useful. Okay, so now that we have it all in the same data frame, and I might call this like joined, just to simplify it a bit. So now that we have it all in joined, let's go back to our question. We want to find the average popularity of hack per office location. So we basically need to do a group by by location and then take the average of all of the popularities. So we have popularities over here. So this can be done with a group by and then uh, a function on group by. So we want to do joined dot group by, we'll group by the column location. And what do we want to do on location? Let's see what we do. If we do just joined dot group by location, what's going to happen? Not going to do anything. Uh, we can do grouping by location, we can take the mean. So that's going to be the average of everything. And so we get all of these averages. I think it doesn't really make sense until I do. We just want the popularity and we want to take the mean of that. So group by is really useful. Basically it allows us to merge together everything that is has a matching value. And with that we can perform functions like mean, sum, min, max, etc. cetera. Uh, I go through group by a bit in my original Python pandas tutorial, so you can check that out if uh, you want some tips about group by. Okay, so we take the popularity column specifically, and we want the mean of that. So what does that give us? Okay, perfect. So we see popularities uh, of these different places, but we're missing something. We're missing the initial location that we're grouping by. So we can get that back by using the handy dandy reset index method in pandas. Do that. Now we see that there's four office locations, India, Switzerland, UK, and USA. And in India, they love hack. They love this, this new language. But in Switzerland, they kind of hate it. 
U UK, USA, we're kind of in the middle here. Um, but I think if we check solution on this, that's what they're looking for, right? The average popularity of hack per office location. Output the location along with average popularity in a series data frame or a panda series. Let's see if that works. Your solution is correct. Congratulations. Your solution has now been logged in the solutions from user tab. Perfect. Look at that. We solved it. That one was definitely a bit more difficulty. We had the join and we had the, the group by. But we can also, again, look at solutions from users. See what other people do. Hey, look at this is my solution. Um, this person used a merge. Looks pretty similar to what we did. Um, and yeah, then they did the same thing with the result. This person renamed the column to ID. Interesting, that's a, a nice little approach. Uh, then it was probably a little bit easier to merge the columns because they both had that same column name ID. Uh, let's see what other people did. Uh, this person, oh, they did pretty much the same thing, but instead of doing reset index, they did as index false. I'm guessing that reduced that step. Person, basically the same thing as what we did. Yeah, a lot of cool answers here, but yeah, that, that's another problem here on Stratascratch. Hopefully you enjoyed these problems. If you did enjoy them, make sure to throw this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'll be posting a lot of problems from this site, uh, and I definitely will do a lot more medium and difficult problems, so be on the lookout for those. Till next time, everyone. Peace out.